Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at probably one of the smallest mobile radios I have seen. It will make installation a breeze in some vehicles. It is the Eniseku WP9900. Hey everybody, welcome back. So if you have looked at some of the newer vehicles that are on the market today, you realize there's not much room for ham radio in them. Uh, for those of us who enjoy the hobby, it's kind of frustrating because it's really hard to put stuff where you want to put it. And I never want to put stuff up on a dashboard where, you know, right on top of the dashboard with the control unit there because it gets too hot, especially out here in Nevada. So this is a very, very unique radio. Everything that you're going to need to run this radio is displayed on the screen and controlled from this keyboard. And yes, you can program it from the keyboard. It is not anywhere near as difficult as some of the original Baofangs. It's nothing like that. It's kind of very intuitive. You know, you'll program your your uh, offsets, your, your tones, all that. Very simple. And you just hit the button to save it. It's all menu-driven. My only complaint with this radio is so is the volume. The volume is menu-driven as well. So to change the volume, you have to hit menu, scroll through everything till you get to the menu, and then change the volume. However, you can fix that with a remote speaker, and you'll notice I have this piece off here, I'll explain that in a second, with a volume control on it. So it's really not the end of the world. You just get an external speaker and a volume control. However, the speaker in here is very, very good. It's actually pretty loud. I was really surprised. So I want to start off the video with telling you this is a quick, quick review of this radio. There will be another video on it. I'm going to install this in my vehicle, and I'll explain that why I'm putting a second dual bander in my, in my vehicle. But really, um, once it's fully programmed and installed, we'll do another video on it, and we'll test it out a little bit. We're going to test it today, but we'll test it out a little bit more once it's in the vehicle and all fully programmed. I have all of my local frequencies put in here. Um, I want to put some Las Vegas frequencies in here in case I'm traveling back and forth. Other than that, not really much more. Um, I did program this with software, and that software is downloadable on their website, and it is beyond simple. This radio won't work with Chirp, but trust me, if you know how to use Chirp, you will be able to use this software. It's beyond simple. It's very, very basic, honestly. And it does everything you need to do to get your frequencies in there, so there's no problems at all with the software. Now, I picked up this radio, again, due to its size and styling. It's a new style of radio, you know, and like I said, if you've seen most modern vehicles, it's impossible to put one in, in a lot of places. This is something you could just stick. This is, the, you know, the main body. You could stick this underneath your uh, seat. Um, it does come with all the, I'll show you the accessories in a sec. It does come with a, you know, a bracket and all, and I kind of scratched it when putting the bracket on there, messing with it. But um, these are your two ports. I had to take this piece off because that is where you plug in your data cable, and this is your external speaker. I will show you that. There is, it does come with the, the rubber that fits in there and around the two screws, and it goes in there just like that. However, if you are using an external speaker, you will need to leave that off because you're going to need to have that open. I guess you could maybe cut it in half. It is kind of thin steel and just cover the data hole, but I wouldn't even bother. And the funny part is they really call this the data hole. <laughs> it's like the twilight zone. <laughs> now, the main body of this radio is about four inches wide, okay? Three inches thick, three inches long, I should say, and 1.3 inches thick. It's a very, very compact rig. Um, I like having all the controls up here. It's Microphone wants to keep turning that way. I like having all the controls up here. These two buttons are user programmable in the menus. I will show you the menus quickly. Again, like I said, I'm going to be doing a second video on this because I want to understand the radio better. I do have it programmed basic. I have the basic functions in it. But I want to know the ins and outs with it, and I want to bring you back once it's in the car, and we can test it a little bit and kind of, you know, explain more, more of the details to you. So far, it's working great. We'll see how it holds up once it's in the car. Now, let me show you quickly, just as a side note, the antenna system I'm doing and why I'm putting this in my vehicle as a second radio. You guys might remember, gosh, I don't know, last year sometime, I put a new antenna system on, my, on the top of my vehicle, and because I parked my car in my garage, there's not enough room for the antenna system. It is a fold-down antenna. Now, i got to admit to being lazy. Every time I run to the store, I don't back the car out of the garage and put the antenna up. And I'm aware that there are, you know, electronic ones that you can push a button and the antenna automatically goes up. It's just not for me. Where I have it mounted is perfect. 
When I'm going to use the radio, if I'm going on a trip, if I'm going into Vegas or whatever, I'll put the antenna up so I can use the radio. Just running around town, honestly, you know, I can monitor with the antenna folded down, but I'm not going to talk on it because the SWR is probably pretty funky. So my goal is to have a radio in my car that I can always turn on and always use. So what I did was I got a lip mount um, antenna system for the front of the hood of the car. I'm going to show it to you really quickly. It's been here a while because I've been waiting for this radio to come in stock. Uh, this is it here. This is the antenna, just a basic dual band antenna from Amazon. I even forget the name on it. It does fold over, and this is what I mean by a fold over antenna, see? However, I didn't get it for that feature because it's going to be going on the hood of the car, and this is the lip mount here. There we go. Okay. This really kind of unwieldy in this space. There's the lip mount. That will go on the, uh, on the edge of the trunk. It will sit outside on the edge of the uh, hood. It will sit outside like this. I have to tighten all this up, all this hardware up. And I can get it straight, and it will go up and down off the side of the vehicle. Now, am I worried about somebody stealing it or breaking it off or whatever? Yeah, you know, I park in my garage most of the time. Uh, when I'm out in public, I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, really, smaller town here, people don't mess with things all that much. And if they do, the antenna was $16. I can always buy a new one. It's not the end of the world. So that's the antenna mount system. Um, when we install it, I'll get all the information on the antenna and where I got it. I think the whole combo of both things was around 40 bucks. It wasn't very expensive. So that's how I'm going to be mounting it. Now, a bit on the software. I mentioned it quickly before. We touched on it really quick. I downloaded the program software from the Anyseku site. Um, it's very easy to find. You'll go to their site, and there are the downloads and the download for this radio. You can, again, you can program from the keypad. It is not all that difficult. You may need to learn the menus. They're labeled different things, you know, like your, your tone is labeled something a little weird. If you're new to ham radio, if you've been around these radios for a while, like I have, you kind of figure stuff out. Um, it's, it's rather intuitive if you know how these radios operate. And yes, the wind is really blowing outside, so if you hear that, that's why. <laughs> Got yet another windy day in the desert. Um, the radio body is sealed up very well from dust or water. Uh, again, if you're going to be using an external speaker, it won't be. I probably am not. I'm probably just going to use this mic as my speaker, so I will be sealing that back up again once I'm done programming it with the programming hole there. Now let's quickly talk about the manual, and then we can hook this thing up and take a look at it. I'll put it on my test bed over there. The manual is kind of unhelpful. It really doesn't tell you much. Um, I think they could have written it better because it's kind of confusing if you don't know radios. But this is all the information on it. Um, you know, it, it will explain the menus to you and what buttons to push where. But it is kind of difficult to understand if you're a new ham. Um, however, it gives you some basic info, but it's not all that helpful. Um, I would recommend, you know, when I do a, another video on this and show you how I programmed it and all, I would recommend waiting for that video to come out. <laughs> But using the software, you will figure this out in no time. If you are a ham, and you've already been a ham for a while, using the software, it's simple. You put your receive, your offset frequency, your receive tone if your repeater has one, your transmit tone, which almost all repeaters have now, and your power level. That's it. It's super simple. And you can put an uh, alphanumeric tag in there, like if you want to say, you know, W7NYE for, you know, the name of the repeater or whatever. Uh, anyway... Let's hook it up to a, uh, the test bed on the side there, and we will uh, try it out. I do want to let you know that it's 25 watts on VHF, 20 watts on UHF, has 200 channels, 200 memories, and it will go on, v on UHF from 136 to 174 megahertz, and on, uh, I'm sorry, on VHF, and on UHF, 400 to 480. So yes, it's possible to transmit out of your allotted frequencies. Please don't. <laughs> Okay, let's take it over to the test bed and try it out. All right, so we're all set up over here on my power box. Um, I do have this connected to an external antenna outside. It is a uh, tri-bander uh, large antenna. Gosh, I can't remember the name of it right now. If you go to my uh, community page there, I have pictures of it from a couple of years ago when I got it. Anyway, this is your display. Fairly simple and easy to read. You can scroll through your memories like this. See, I have my memories in there. Let's just try a local repeater. You do have a signal strength meter over here. I'm going to uh, go to this one here and just try it out. I mean, 6 UTC. See? You'll see the numbers at the bottom there. 
and the numbers at the bottom there will show you your signal strength coming back at you. Um, instead of just the meter, you'll also have numbers, so you can judge from 1 to 100 how strong that signal is coming Welcome back. Welcome to the N7HYV repeater. There's the repeater there, coming back at me. So it's fairly simple to operate. Um, your menu, if you want to go into your menu button, you're going to push your menu button here. Okay, so this is menu FM. You're going to push your menu button. That's your volume. I had it on there last. That is why it's kind of annoying. If I wanted to change that volume, I'd simply push my menu button again and go up or down. Okay? So, and when you're done, you just go through that and you scroll through. Timeout timer. Okay. Transmit power, squelch level. Step. So it's all in there, very simple and easy to program. It's really not all that difficult to program. Um, I did use the software because, well, I had a bunch of frequencies to put in and I wasn't going to do it manually. But it's very simple to do manually. It's really not difficult at all. And there, it jumps right out of that when you're done. So you'll see your voltage, your battery, uh, your signal here. High power, it's a plus or minus offset. It is on uh, wide FM. And... There's other controls right there. So it's fairly simple to operate, really not difficult at all. We're going to try one more, um, one more repeater here. Going the wrong way. W6UTC, testing. Okay. So you can see that's fairly close to me, that repeater. It's 94% uh, signal strength. So, all in all, a neat little radio. Your on and off button is up here. Boy, did that confuse the heck out of me. I haven't quite figured out what this button is yet. Like I said, when I come back with another review, it's going to be a little more thorough. But that's your off button there, so you just push and hold. And that's it. And it will say goodbye to you. So it's a very, very simple radio to operate. I know a lot of these radios will look complicated when you first get them. and You go, oh my god, I'm never going to learn this. It's really not difficult at all. Now, you think about making a portable go bag, okay, or a go box similar to this when I used to have a radio in it before I had a separate radio to mount in it. Um, something like this would be amazing. I mean, you just toss this in the box here, drill a little hole for your microphone, run it through, and you got yourself a, uh, a go box. You could even do a little grommet there, make it waterproof. Definitely has some potential. I'm going to enjoy uh, trying it out and uh, messing with it. Again, the reason I did this video... Um, so quickly before I fully, you know, learned every little detail of the radio is because these are very popular. They are pretty much new to the market within the last, I would say, couple of months, and they are disappearing quickly. So if you are interested in getting one, the time to act on them is right now. Um, they are flying off the shelves. I think there's like 17 left of these on Amazon right now. They are all over eBay, um, all over uh, other places too. I'm going to turn it back on for you. Give you something to look at while I'm talking here. Let me see how it turns on. So I do like the display in the hand. I do like the microphone, you know, with everything at your at your controls right there. Um, something I will tell you is that if you wear glasses to drive, you will you will need to also make sure you can see the screen. It is kind of small. It's not the biggest screen in the world, but for most people, that's more than adequate. It did come with. Let me show you the accessories. A cigarette lighter plug, which I have plugged into here. I'm probably going to cut that off and just wire it into the harness that I already have for the other radios. This one did come with its own programming cable. And by the way, this is not a pain in the butt to install. You plug this in, it installs itself real quick, no problems. I have a Windows 10 machine, no issues at all. Plug it in, you'll hear, -dun, it'll install. Plug that in there, or whatever your notification noise is. You plug that in there, and you have control of the radio via the software. It's, uh, it will find the COM port for you very, very quickly, and uh, you have control of the radio. After you program stuff in here, okay, it will shut the radio off, recycle it, and come back up again. So you may want to wait to get all your frequencies programmed in so you're not constantly recycling the radio, but it doesn't really matter. So it does come with a programming cable. It did come with a mounting bracket. We'll probably use that to put that down somewhere so it isn't just flopping around in the breeze. And it did come with a bunch of a microphone hanger and a bunch of screws and other things to install it into the bracket and an extra fuse. So that will probably go into my glove compartment and of course this little piece here so we can put everything in there and uh, seal it up and make it really nice so so far I'm loving the radio I am going to install it we're going to do a little more information on it um, at a later date but uh, I wanted to get the info out to you the price on them is really not all that bad $129 all right now you are paying for the compactness of it because I know there's 25 watt radios out there that are $79 
So you are paying for the compact size. Um, any Seku does make a lot of cool stuff. So I'm really liking it. All in all, neat little radio. Uh, like I said, once I install it, we will be doing a little bit more detail on it. Uh, I just wanted to get it out there because I know people are, um, people are, we're asking, a couple people asked me about this radio. And I figured, well, let me learn as much as I can, as quick as I can, get the information out there, let you guys see it, and then go from there. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to check out the link for this down below. It will be down below in my store. If it's out in my store, don't freak out. Go on eBay. You might even find it cheaper on eBay. I've seen it for 119 on eBay. So check eBay first. Um, check, uh, what is it, Wish. Uh, a bunch of other sites have this. It may take a while to come from China, but you'll get it. But eBay has a bunch of these on there in the same price range. I saw a few for 119 so check eBay first before you buy from Amazon, uh, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's just cheaper. So a quick wrap-up on this radio, give you, a little, give you a little specs on it. It does have dual-band, triple display, standby. You do have your battery voltage built in. It does have built-in box if you want to use it. I don't suggest you use it because if you're talking in your car, that radio conver that conversation goes over the air. It does have a busy channel lockout, DTMF, of course, emergency alert. Um, you can set this to have an emergency alert. An FM radio, high-low trans transmit power, which is switchable, large color LCD display. I don't know about large. I'd say it's okay. A <laughs> low battery alert. You can set it up with a monitor channel. It does do scanning, and you can program it from a PC just like I did. So, don't forget to check it out. The link will be down below. Like I said, the link down there um, is $129. You may be able to find it cheaper on eBay, so check eBay first. Don't forget to check eBay before you buy from my store because if it's going to be a couple bucks less, go for it. Then again, they might get you on shipping. I've seen that with some shortwave radios. They're like vintage shortwave radio, $79, shipping, $50. So, check the shipping first. Uh, if you do have Prime, it's free shipping from Amazon. That's 129 bucks. Don't forget to check out our Amazon store down below. Down there, you'll find everything that I review in the channel if it's on Amazon. Uh, you can check out stats or anything I might have missed in the videos. We have our freeze dry wholesaler link down below, too. Don't forget to check him out, too, as well. You save 15% simply by going on that link. We have our Food for Patriots link, which is preparewithiridium.com. Preparewithiridium.com. And lastly, our Thrive Life link. Um, I'm getting a lot more orders from people in Thrive. Uh, looks like you folks are checking it out. There's a lot of new people, so don't forget to check that out too. Make sure you get stocked up before any more problems come your way. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.